Namaste. And welcome back to Grow with the Jan family. And today, Pakistan is in trouble again. When are they not in trouble, Mama? I know. I think Imran Khan gets on his pedestal one too many times. About Kashmir. About, yes, good old Kashmir. Um, he really, he can't help himself. Yeah. I think any time he gets in front of a microphone, he has to bring it up. Um, but we know Saudi Arabia has already asked for $1 billion back from Imran Khan, and they had to borrow it from their good friend China. What's China going to do to them? Yeah. Uh, yeah. When are they going to ask for it back? That's yeah. a good question. And if they can't pay it then, good luck, Pakistan. Pakistan's going to be broke soon. Yeah. So this is Saudi Arabia's royal snub to Pakistan, and it seems like they want the rest of their money back. And um, so let's watch it. Weon always has good information, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we come to Pakistan. This is a question that we've been asking for over a week. Is Pakistan losing Saudi Arabia? Yep. Tonight I have the answer for you. Pakistan has lost Saudi Arabia its biggest diplomatic loss and the most significant geopolitical win for India. We shall discuss that shortly, the India part. First, let me tell you what's happened in Pakistan or in Saudi Arabia. The Pakistan army chief has returned empty-handed from the sheikhdom. General Kamar Javed Bajwa flew to Riyadh on Sunday. With him was the ISI chief, General Faiz Hamid, for the special effect perhaps. The two wanted to sm smoothen the straining Pak-Saudi ties and secure Pakistan's place in the Islamic Brotherhood Club. What they got instead was a royal snub and a load of embarrassment. The visit to Saudi Arabia was an epic failure. According to reports, the Pakistan army chief could not even secure a meeting with the Saudi crown prince. Mohammed bin Salman did not give him an audience, forget giving him a medal. General Bajwa was to be given a medal, but the Saudis changed their mind. All he got was a meeting with the Crown Prince's younger brother, Sheikh Khalid bin Salman, and the Deputy Defense Minister of Saudi Arabia, he is the Deputy Defense Minister, and also Major General Fayyad Ali Ruwaili. He's the Kingdom's Chief of Staff. So basically, General Bajwa's interaction was limited to the Saudi defense establishment. Perhaps the Pakistanis knew all along, which is why they had a face saver ready. Face -saver. They've been mm -hmm. saying the visit was only meant to focus on defense ties. Is this unusual? Yes, it is. Very unusual, to be honest. The Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia is famous for meeting his guests in his own flamboyant ways. He doesn't shy away from rolling out the red carpet for foreign dignitaries. Just last year, he awarded a grand reception to General Bajwa in Riyadh. That was 2019. A lot of oil has flown between Riyadh and Islamabad in this one year. And Pakistan is slipping from the good books. It has failed to be worth the oil it is getting from the Saudis. Imran Khan's obsession, obsession with Kashmir has ruined obsession. his ties with the yeah. Crown Prince. His government has always relied on the Kashmir narrative to stay in power. Now the same narrative has cast a shadow on Pakistan's foreign policy. It is hurting its business dealings with most Islamic countries. It is hurting its old ties. And Saudi Arabia is not just any other Islamic country. It is the de facto leader of the mm -hmm. Islamic world the religious and financial provider of Pakistan. Well, used to be until China came along. Yeah. Islamabad owns, owes billions of dollars in loans to Riyadh. The Pakistan foreign minister was not quite in touch with this reality. He let his emotions take control. He crossed the red line. His statement has become one of the flashpoints of the Saudi-Pakistan breakup. आज ओआईसी को फैसला करना है कि क्या इस पाकिस्तान के हसास जो एक फाउंडिंग मेंबर के हसास मसले पर वो हमारा साथ देना चाहती है कि नहीं वक्त आ गया है कि ओआईसी अब जो है वो जिसे कहते हैं ना ये जो बच बचाओ आंख मचोली से बाहर निकले सर ये बहुत बड़ी बात यू डोंट टॉक लाइक दिस व्हेन योर नेक डीप इन लोन्स but we don't quite blame Shah Mahmood Qureshi. He rose to power because of such political grandstanding. Well, now he's taken it too far and lost the ground beneath his feet. Yesterday, there were reports that Mr. Foreign Minister was to be sacked. 
In his frustration, Qureshi slapped the Prime Minister's Principal Secretary. It was all over the news. Now with General Bajwa returning empty-handed from Saudi Arabia, Qureshi's position has become untenable. Pakistan's rift with Saudi Arabia is a major setback to them. And part of the credit goes to India. Let me explain. This is the first time in the history of India-Arab ties that they are backing India on Kashmir against wow. Pakistan. Yeah, awesome. Despite Pakistan's best efforts, the Organization of Islamic Countries has refused to censure India. They are honoring the Indian Prime Minister with their high civilian medals. They are boosting trade ties with India. There is a significant shift. A major geopolitical realignment is taking place in West Asia. The most telling example was seen last week. The normalization of the relations between the UAE and Israel. Remember, India is a close strategic partner of both these countries. India first dehyphenated Israel and Palestine, and now the UAE has followed suit. India is also a close trade and energy partner of Saudi Arabia, the home of more than 180 million Muslims, the second highest population in the world. And I repeat, for the first time in history, Arab nations led by Saudi Arabia are leaning closer to India. I don't blame them. Yeah. India and Pakistan so stands isolated, them. seeking loans and obsessing over yeah, Kashmir. Obsessing. India has managed to de-link Pakistan from its Arab friends. Now they have China. Yeah. Imran Khan saw this coming. Like, yeah. he knew that the prince was not happy with him. And so he, I think, tried to, you know, test the waters out to make sure he wasn't going to get, like, slapped in the face. Well, him testing the waters got him slapped in the face, so... Yeah. I think this was worse. Like, you should have fired um, the foreign prime minister first, and then went... By yourself. By yourself to go apologize and say, like, he's no longer in the party, that is not how we agree, we believe... You know, we would like your support on the Kashmir issue because I know that's what this whole thing is about. Yeah. You know, but instead, he sends his goon in and then they try to pretend it's because he's getting a medal, which he doesn't get anyways. Yeah. Yeah. Imran Khan's pedestal, this, this cashmere pedestal that he gets up on the UN floor that he gets up every time he has a mic is going to be the demise of him and his country. It's going to be the downfall of, of him Pakistan. and his country, yeah. Yeah. Because now you owe money to China. 1 billion dollars to China, your new buddy, your new Two best friend. 2 billion dollars to Still Saudi Arabia. To Saudi Arabia, which they're going to ask for that back. And then are you going to borrow more from China? So then what's going to happen then? You're still going to owe China $3 billion. Oh, my God. I can't imagine owing that much money to China. Yeah. And they want you to um, start a bioweapon lab so that they can blame you when it leaks out. So then you're going to have even more loans to get back. Like Yeah. And they're not nice. Like, Saudi Arabia got mad because of something in your party. Like, something... Yeah was said that was not okay for them. China's not going to... Usually Saudi Arabia, you know, lets you pay it back whenever you can. They know you don't have a lot of money. They're not asking you tomorrow. Mm. You know, U.S. is like, we know you need money, Pakistan. You know, we'll work th with you. China is going to wait till the worst second, not give you a lot of time to, to find the money, and then they're going to just roll them troops right in and take yeah. over. And you see what they do to the Uyghur Muslims. Can you imagine what they're going to do to Pakistan if you owe them so much money that you can't ever pay your back your best friend? Oh, yeah. Such a good friend. Yeah. A good friend that's waiting to get you in so much debt that they just take over to your country like they've done to so I many others. I like you, yeah. Mm-hmm. And change your Quran. Imran Khan, this is like... The Kashmir issue is going to be the death of you and Pakistan. Yeah. And irony. And lots of irony. I love that Saudi Arabia is now siding with India on Kashmir, a Muslim country, a Muslim yeah. majority country that is the leader of the Muslim world is siding with India on Kashmir. Kashmir. Yeah. Like, I need a slap. 
noise right now. Like, that is such a slap in the face for you. This is the whole reason you've been yelling that India, Kashmir needs to be its own free, you know, India's being mean, you know, the Muslims are being treated poorly. Even people here are talking about the genocide that India is doing to the people but of now, Kashmir. But now, the Muslim country has gone towards India for the Kashmir. Yeah, and for trade. Mm-hmm. So, huge, huge slap in the face. Yeah. Um, yeah. You you needed to work that out a little bit better. Like, when your person says something like that, the first thing you needed to do was fire him and go apologize. By yourself, not yeah. your goons. Yeah. Because that is the end all, I think. Yeah. Hopefully Imran Khan gets off his pedestal and stops taking money from China yeah. until they're in so much debt that they have nothing left to do but sell themselves to the dragon. And um, hopefully we'll see you again tomorrow. Bye. Bye.